Hey guys, Matt here today. Alright, I'm going to do a couple more of these videos and then we're going to move on because I'm falling behind. But we're, we're on the, uh, the passage in, in 1 Thessalonians 4 where, where Paul, and I'm just going to summarize again, he says 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, 6, and, and 8, he says, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality. Uh, he goes on, he says, Because the Lord is an avenger in all these things, as we told you and solemnly warned you before, and he goes on in verse 8 and he says, Therefore, whoever disregards this, disregards not man, but God, who gives his Holy Spirit. That is so important because he talks about, not only is this God's will, but God's an avenger, and we don't have an excuse because God gives us his Holy Spirit. And that's kind of kind of the flavor of the, the videos that I'm going after. Again, not trying to fall in the ditch of legalism that we never will sin as a Christian, no, no. And definitely picking on the, the ditch of liberalism in these videos because I think that's the ditch where, where we all fall in. Uh, and today I want to I want to kind of kick over something that I heard more when I was a baby Christian. Actually, to be honest, b before I was even truly born again, uh, to be honest, isn't that great? I should be honest, right? What a great idea. Uh, okay, so so here's, here's, the, uh, here's the excuse. But I'm a man, I'm wired this way, right? I used to have a friend who said that all the time, and I borrowed it from him. Uh, this is this was when I was pretending to be a Christian. But I'm a man. I'm wired this way. This is my besetting sin. You know, people love to use Romans seven here, right? Oh, wretched man that I am! I do what I don't want to do, and I don't do what I want to do. Oh, right, as if Paul was somehow practicing sin. Paul didn't write Romans seven as a pillow for our sin, right? He didn't write it as a land that we should pitch a tent in and hang out in, right? If Paul was practicing sin, we just saw in Galatians 5, 19 through 21, people who practice sin do not inherit the kingdom of God. If he was practicing sin, God wouldn't have chosen him to write over half of the New Testament, right? Infer with that what you want. I'm not going to go there today. That's another video, but here's the deal. God doesn't wire us to sin against him. Now, some of you hear this and it's like, well, duh, but I've heard this quite a, quite a bit. You know, I'm wired this way. I can't control myself. I can't help myself. Again, 2 Corinthians 5.17. My son just learned this verse. It's a great verse to memorize. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, all things are new. All things are new, right? As Paul said so eloquently in Galatians 2.20, I'm crucified with Christ. I'm dead, man. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In this life, this life here that I'm living now, oh, I'm living by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. So Paul knew he was dead. It was no longer him living. He knew that if anyone is born again, if anyone claims Christ, if anyone's truly in Christ, they're a new creation. The old has passed away. A new creation isn't wired. God doesn't wire us to sin against him. He's not some cosmic sadist, right? He doesn't throw us in a candy store and as a, as a kid, look at this way, my son loves chocolate, right? I wouldn't take my son, make him not eat for a couple of hours, have him be really hungry and then throw him in a chocolate store and lock the door knowing he loves chocolate and say, good luck with that, you know, good luck with that son. God doesn't do that either. He doesn't throw us in a, in a situation we have no way of getting out and say, good luck with that, God out, good luck with that. No, 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 God is good. He is faithful. In fact, I want to read uh, a verse here. I'll read the whole passage, but here's the verse. It's 1 Corinthians 10, 13, because some guys think they're special, like they're, they're alpha male, they're super machismo, they can't control themselves. And God says, hey, not only are you new creation, but in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, he says, if anyone's in Christ, or no, he says, uh, what does he say? Oh yeah, no temptation, that's the one. No temptation has seized you except that which is common to man. It's common. It's common. We can't use it as some outlandish, extraordinary excuse. I can't. No, 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 no. No. No temptation has seized you except that which is common to man. It's common to all men and women to suffer from temptation from sexual sin. But they don't have to give in to it. Why? Because God is faithful. He is just. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. And when you are tempted, He'll provide you with a way out. He won't throw you into a situation and lock the door and say, good luck with that. No, no, no. God is good. He doesn't wire us to sin against Him. He wires us to obey Him. Be holy as I am holy. How can we do that? By His Holy Spirit which He gives us. 
Why do we care? Because he's an avenger and it's his will that we walk in this freedom. So don't let anyone tell you and don't let these words come from your mouth that you're wired this way, that you can't help it. Oh, wretched man that I am, just like Paul in Roman, the guys in the prison love to use that. And I, I am really quick to point out, no, that's not a pillow to sin. That's not why Paul wrote that. All right, that's where we'll stop today. We'll do another one tomorrow. See ya.